This week, the United Nations General Assembly is convening a special session for the only second time in the history of the institution focused on HIV-AIDS. Lori Garrett is the senior fellow of the Global Health Program at the Council on Foreign Relations. The membership of the Council on Foreign Relations includes wealthy entrepreneurs, lobbyists, lawyers, secretaries of state, Wall Street investors, and international bankers. They hold regular private meetings with very select guests. The image of the CFR as a closed bipartisan discussion forum has fueled criticism that the organization and its members are controlling world policy and events. The disease was not taken seriously and was not addressed in an aggressive and appropriate manner at a time when it might have been controllable. The worldwide AIDS epidemic is largely a fictional construct created by the pharmaceutical industry. AIDS front groups want to keep spreading fear in order to unlock more fundraising dollars which of course boosts the profits of pharmaceutical and prescription drug companies. AIDS is the best example of what's really scary and alarming and dangerous about our culture right now, which is that it's a culture of of PR. It's a public relations phenomenon. The truth doesn't matter. What matters is the image. These, this whole thing was not supposed to be, now no one's safe from AIDS. It was supposed to be the new faces of AIDS. So now this whole article, which was supposed to get people to embrace the AIDS epidemic and all its new faces, most people never even read the article. They just saw the cover. No one's safe from AIDS. Different message. Once he put out the scare, you know, the money started to flow, it really did. Um, all of a sudden, AIDS was a very fundable project. The government had been persuaded to spend an enormous amount of money on AIDS on the basis that it would affect everybody. I called Matilda and I said, what the hell are you doing? We don't have any evidence that this is happening. It was a total fraud and scam. Um, it was a fundraising ploy. Isn't that ethically wrong to scare an entire population? What do you think? This, listen, you live in this world, you know that's exactly what they do. The disease was not taken seriously and was not addressed in an aggressive and appropriate manner at a time when it might have been controllable. We have a cumulative total of perhaps as many as 75 million people and a death toll in the ballpark of 35 million. A closer look at the Centers for Disease Control's documents reveals that AIDS numbers actually declined in 1993, but a retroactive definition change increased the estimates by more than 100 percent. The more diseases they could lump into this AIDS syndrome, S stands for syndrome, the better the chances are they get patients under that umbrella, the more patients they could catch. As time goes along, you know, definitions get used for a variety of, of issues, and some of those are not based solely on scientific decisions, but politics and capitalism and reimbursement comes into play. The changes in the definition have been political. Every time they change the definition, the numbers go up. If you develop any of a number of opportunistic infections or diseases, that puts you in the category of AIDS. We can be exposed to HIV many times without being chronically infected. Our immune system could get rid of virus within a few weeks if you have a good immune system. And this is a problem also Africa, of African people. Their, their nutrition is not very equilibrated. They are in oxidative stress, even they are not infected with HIV. So their immune system doesn't work well already. So it's prone, they can, you know, uh, allow HIV to get in and uh, persist. If you have a good immune system, then your body can naturally get rid of HIV. Yes. If, if you take a poor African who's been infected and you build up their immune system, is it possible for them to also naturally get rid of it? I would think so. Well, there's no money in, in nutrition, right? There's no profit. There's no profit, yes. So today's meeting, this week's session at the General Assembly will decide, is humanity ready to finally embrace the problem, throw the right money at it and the right toolkit at it, and stop the further spread of this terrible, deadly virus? So the fear-mongering continues, the fraud continues, and the truth gets swept under the rug.